You both said today that you love each other, and I believe it, but I'm trying to tell you love is not enough for a successful marriage. There's so many other things that go in it. It's not just about you anymore. Here is today's case. Rachel and Alton met four years ago at a poker tournament. A month after meeting, Alton moved in and their relationship began. Alton proposed at an amusement park and they have now been married for a year and a half. Rachel claims that Alton's reckless behavior and lack of financial sense has ruined their marriage. She now believes that she rushed into her marriage and is ready to end it today in divorce court. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, as you know, for the first time on Divorce Court, we have a virtual audience and it's filled with your super fans. Today's super fan of the day is Sarah from Buford, Georgia. Hi, Sarah. Welcome to Divorce Court. We're so happy to have you with us. Your Honor, today's case is Hanslovic versus Hanslovic. Thank you, Juan. Rachel Hanslovic. Yes, Your Honor. You have brought your husband, Alton Hanslovic. Yes, Your Honor. To court today, you are suing for $900 payments you said you've made on an engagement ring? That's correct. I understand the two of you have been married a year and a half. Yes, ma'am. You've been together for four years, but now you're in divorce court because of a number of issues you want to discuss with me. Yes. I'll start with you, ma'am. Well, I feel like it might be a waste of my time to pursue this marriage any further. Um, he doesn't really do a whole lot. He doesn't help me pay bills. He puts in a lot less effort than I put into this marriage, mm -hmm. and he's weighing me down. He's slowing me down with my own career goals. So if this is not going to work out in the long run, I want to cut it right now. What do you have to say, sir? I just feel like her attitude is, is just up there, too high sometimes, and I'm tired of, like, the power struggle. Mm -hmm. Like, every day, she's trying to, like, take over everything, kind of the money, the, the where we go, the what we buy, everything. Like, and it's just, I don't know if I can do that and probably jumped into this a little too early. Really? Because you were together for four years, so you were, you had a relationship for two and a half years before you decided to get married. So you didn't see any of these issues before proposing? Not in the beginning, no. Everything was just peaches and cream. Everything's good. I mean, smiles, giggles, happy. I mean, we have our little arguments or so ups and downs, but mm -hmm. nothing to the point where it just got to this, where it just built up. So what has changed over the last year and a half since the two of you got married? He has made these promises for years that he's going to go back to school, he's going to go to have all these career aspirations, become an architect, and he's going to pay his fair share, and he's going to stop smoking so much weed, but it's been four years, and he's made zero progress, mm. and I'm tired of waiting. You said there are a number of specific issues that have come up. Mm -hmm. One of them has to do with your lifestyle. The two yes. of you like to play poker. That's correct. And tell me what's going on with that. Well, that's how we met. Um, we like to bar hop poker tournaments and, you know, drink a lot sometimes. But things like this will lead him to be extremely reckless. He uh, spends all our money on weed and I have to pay the rest of the bills. Mm -hmm. um, he lies. He skips school. Like, there's just a number of issues that I'm just like, I'm really ready to just wash my hands of it all. How, how much money do you say he's spending on weed in a week? Probably about $200 a week. Is that how much you're spending? Yeah, probably, probably about 200 Really? Yeah. That is a lot, yeah. Mr. Hanslovic. Are you working right now? Yeah, I work. I work I work for a moving company, actually. And so, so, $200 a week, that's $800 a month. Do you really have that much extra income to spend just on weed? I mean, he don't even have a car. No. Oh, my. So, you walking when you buy your weed? No, nah, no, nah, I'm not walking when I buy my weed. No, no, no. I either get picked up, Uber, or I use her car. $800 is a car <laughs> note. Yeah, I know. But on a 19... She talks about Honda, me for sure. smoking, but she drinks. Like, she's I'm, a drinker. I, we, I haven't gotten to her drinking yet. I know you want to deflect and talk about something else, but I just want to know about this $800 a month <laughs> weed habit, and you don't even have a car. Wouldn't you rather drive... Yeah. ...to get where you need to go rather than smoke the car up in weed? <laughs> yeah, I would. I would much rather drive. You're right. Do you think you're, When did you start smoking weed? When I was about, like, 14, 15. And it's developed into this kind of habit? Yeah. This is something you need to get a hold on, Mr. What? Heslovic. Did you know this before the yes. wedding? Yes. I mean, yeah, we used to smoke together sometimes, but I kind of grew up and faded out of that, and he just never did. But, you know, his weed smoking is honestly kind of the least of all my concerns mm -hmm. here. He's, he's reckless, endangers our lives. He likes to confront gunmen. 
um, when I'm with him, you know, like just okay. careless. Let me... where, where are the two of you going when you're facing down gunmen? He was working on a food truck downtown till like two or three in the morning. I drive all the way down there to pick him up, you know, because he ain't got no car. So I went down there, I got like maybe 30 minutes early, and so he's sitting in the car with me, and then some car pulls up, so he gets out to go, like, you know, make an order. The guy got upset, starts a fight with his coworker, pulls the gun out, and Elton thinks it's a good idea to just go and confront the guy while he's got his coworker on the ground with a gun to his head, and he's just gonna talk him down. But I had already called the police when he started, like, the, you know, loud shouting and the other fights. So they showed up pretty quick to where nobody was hurt, you know, thank God. They showed up probably within, like, two minutes of Alton getting out of the car so stupidly, you know, trying to confront this man with a gun. So you see a man with a gun. He, he's pointing at your coworker? Yeah. So that's why you jumped out of the car, because you were ready to save a life. He's ready to join him in yeah, the break. Yeah, Your Honor. I wasn't not... ready to join. I was ready to... It was three of us. It was one of him. We could have... We could have did something and got him. I understand why you wanted to intervene because your coworker being held at gunpoint. Right. What did you say when you went over? I actually wasn't able to go over because Rachel was holding me back and like not letting me get out the car, so mm. I couldn't. I was really like go on top of him, like you're not getting out this car, like you're you got to stay in here. But you know, I wasn't able to hold him in the car. He eventually got out, but I so, bought him enough time to. So the hold on, ma'am. Ma so so your wife was able to stop you, but you were gonna take on the guy with the gun. <laughs> How often does she get blackout drunk? She drinks so much to the point where she's gotten alcohol poisoning. Mm. Like one time, what happened? Yes. She's like yelling at this lady. Say it again. Say it again. We had to all get up and stop because it was about to get physical. Well, I can see why you two are a lovely couple. You say she talks about your weed. Yeah. But according to you, it's the pot calling kettle black. Exactly what it what, is. What's going on with her drinking? Drinks a lot. I'm like, a lot is probably like not Like a lot even... as in how much you smoke weed a lot? Like or more less? than the way I smoke, like more than what I do on the weed smoking. Like, she drinks so much to the point where she's gotten alcohol poisoning. Mm, like One time. What happened? Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, look, you see, one time, like, it ain't nothing. Okay. My dog died. So, what happened? This is what happened. We, we like, like you said, we like to play poker. We go to bars, different bars playing poker. I go, it's like, I had to work late kind of that night. I get off around 10. And I'll go, she's at the bar already playing poker, having drinks or whatnot. So once I get there, I'm like, all right, I just got off a long day. I'm going to sit there, have one or two. She's lapping me. I'm talking about my one or two is about four to, four to her, just back mm -hmm. and forth, back and forth, to the point where she kept putting her head on the bar, where they were telling us, like, you, you can't put your head on the bar, you got to leave. Like, or they're going to cut, because yeah, at they, this they, point, they're going to cut, cut you us off. off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So took her home. Starts vomiting, mm -hmm. wouldn't stop. Take her to the doctor. They tell you she got alcohol poisoning mm -hmm. from too much drinking. Mm -hmm. How often does she get she, blackout drunk? Oh, she get she get blackout drunk a lot. At a time we was playing cards, she was so drunk. Like I could tell she was drunk. She was slurring her words when she was speaking to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm at a different table than her. She's at one table. We're playing the cards. I hear a commotion go on. You could tell someone's just going back and forth. And I can tell it's her voice. So I look, and she's like yelling at this lady, say it again, say it again. And I guess the lady said it again. She takes the deck of cards and she throws them in her face mm. to the point where we had to all get up and stop because it was about to get physical. Well, I can see why you two are a lovely couple. <laughs> And I am shocked that you have ended up here. He's also a drunk. Like, on St. Patrick's Day, we go out to the parade every single year, and then afterwards, we go play a poker tournament. This past year, I got too drunk, and or not too drunk, like too sunburnt, and I was a little too drunk. Too drunk. So I stayed home and did not go to the poker tournament. He goes by himself and was supposed to come back and check on me at 10 o'clock before the second one started. I woke up around midnight. He isn't home, he hasn't called, texted, I can't reach him, so I walk all the way to the bar that he was supposed to be at. He's not there. People told me that he was so drunk that he forgot that I didn't go with him, and he was walking around the bar looking for me. Mm. And so I had a friend drive me around for four hours looking for him, going everywhere we thought he might be, and we found my car parked two streets over in somebody else's driveway. And first thought, I'm thinking, okay, he's cheating, right? Nope, he's sitting in the car, passed out drunk, and he in my floorboard. 
And he let the car run out of gas because it was running so long. He pulled into so, the wrong Mr. driveway. Hans right. he was Mr. So Hanslevic. Yes. Mr. Hanslevic, you want to tell all these drinking okay. stories, but you left out that doozy? You want children? I want children natural. You want to adopt or explore yes. other yes. options? Did you know this before you got married? Yeah, I did know that, but I, I, I planned on changing her mind. But you married a woman who told you she did not want that. The two of you are not ready to have a child. You have a lot of growing up to do. The two of you actually do have a lot in common. Unfortunately, it's all destructive. Yeah. The fact that you are alive and here and standing in front of me today, right, mm -hmm. is somewhat of a blessing in and of itself. Because you black out drunk driving and can't even make your way home. You're so disoriented. How often are you doing that, sir? Not often. When you say not often, what are we talking about here? A couple of that times was a month? That one occasion. That one occasion. Yeah. I don't know if I believe that, Mr. Hanslevic. Okay. The marijuana and alcohol use for both of you that is problematic. Even it though. She's flirty. She's flirty. She got thousands and thousands of friends. Majority of them are men. Mm -hmm. And majority of the men comments on her pictures and mm -hmm. stuff and everything. Like, look at her. Beautiful. Nice mm -hmm. woman. Love her. But she gets too like like loose and careful. You think she's cheating? It, it could be. It, it might What's be. What's the I, evidence you submitted? I got some, some, some evidence. I got some uh, text messages. I got text messages. Sorry to bother you, but I just wanted to let you know how blank good looking you are for real. Keep doing whatever you're doing because you're perfect. That's someone texting you, ma'am? Yes. You respond, why thank you? You're not bad yourself. Okay. I'm it's just another being polite. one. No, I got I'm another just being one. That ain't thank it. you. What, that ain't what, it. what other evidence do you have one. of her crossing the line, as you say? I'm working all day and night. This individual responds, oh, nice. How late do you work till I might come up? Do you know this person who's writing nope. this? Hey, if you wanted, you could text me. And Ms. Hanslovic responds, LOL, I'll be pretty busy, so may have to text when I get off. Just ask for me when you come in. And, and he asks, do you have any plans after work? Who is this person? I honestly don't even remember. Exactly. You don't, well, I'm not surprised you don't remember as much exactly. as you drink. You know, it sounds like I was at work. Uh, I worked at Hooters a few years back, and, um, you know, you, you make your money building clientele, so if I have a customer who gives me his number, I'll be like, come back in and see me next time, you know. So you're just networking. Money. You're just networking. I need money to, you know, pay for Too all his stuff networking. he doesn't pay for. I'm not trying to burn any bridges. What's I don't know how the long issue? The last. two of you don't have children. No, we don't. No. But this is a point of contention in the relationship because... You want children? I want children. I want children natural. Like, I want a natural... Y'all don't need to have no kids. <laughs> I want <laughs> natural children. Not. But she doesn't want natural children. I do want she children. Wants, this is why she tells me she don't want natural children. I've brought it up to her plenty of times. Even in the beginning, kind of before... you say she doesn't want natural children, what do you mean by that? By giving birth. She, don't, okay. she doesn't so want to You want to adopt or explore yes. other yes. options? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you know this before you got married? Yeah, I did know that, but I, I, I planned on changing her mind, being okay. able to let time grow and maybe talk about it over well, and Mr. over Hansel and change Vick, her that's, mind. Well, Mr. that's a personal problem that you have, sir, because she told you and she was honest about it before you got married. But, and you decided you were going to convince her. You cannot be mad at her now because you haven't been able to change her mind. You understand? She was honest about that from the beginning. I understand that, but with me, I've been through a lot through life. I went through foster care system. So me having a kid, a natural kid that's mine, I know what to do and I'm gonna know how to raise it and I wouldn't let that Ms. happen to Mr. my Mr. Hanslovic, like, I understand like, why you want to have children and you have every right to feel that way, but you married a woman who told you she did not want that. She has every right to feel the way she feels. She was honest with you about it. This is one of the bigger issues in the relationship outside of the fact that the two of you are not ready to have a child. You have a lot of growing up to do. You're suing for $945 mm -hmm. for, is it an engagement ring or a yes. wedding ring? It's a, it, it, well, it's a wedding ring, I What guess. happened? Why are you suing for your ring? Well, he proposed with a fake ring. Whenever we went to get the real one that we were gonna finance, expensive one that he said I deserved, I was the only one that could get financed. So we had to put it in my name. He swore he would make all the payments on it, but here we are, we've made 10 payments, and I have paid seven of them, mm. equaling $945. Why haven't you been paying for the ring? Because 
things got tight. I moved jobs mm -hmm. and my money was a little tight. And plus, like I said, her being controlling, whenever I do get money, it's mm -hmm. about what she wants to do. Mm -hmm. And that's not one of the first things on her mind either is that we have to pay that. Okay. It's about what she wants to do. He acts like I run do. his life, but somebody has to. If he ran his own life or our life, it would fall apart. You know what? How about you stop smoking weed for five weeks and you will have enough money to pay for that ring? That's right. Right. So where are your know, priorities, sir? You say she prioritizes the money on other things, but now we're talking about a ring. It's five weeks worth of your weed. Here's what we're going to do. Reprioritize some things in your finances, sir, so you can pay for the ring. You want her to have the ring, right? Yes, I do. I do. And the two of you have been married now for a year and a half. And she, you're wearing the ring today, ma'am? The simulated diamond one, yes. Where's the ring that you Oh, it's still at the store. We can't pick it up yet until oh, we pay off layaway. half of it. Oh, it's on layaway. Well, we Basically, financed it. Yeah. Once we pay half of it off, we, we can pick it up. We pay our finance Okay. What's the half that's left? Um, the half that's left is about 1400 I think. 1400 Here's what we're going to do. I want you to work harder to pay for the ring. You understand, okay. sir? Make some sacrifices. I got it. The weed is something that you really need to address in your life. I know you've seen a lot of things and you've witnessed a lot of things. So have I when I was working in New York in criminal court. And I'm gonna tell you something. Whenever I saw someone coming in front of me and they started talking to me about their bad habits and it involved drugs, including weed, abusing alcohol, which is exactly what's going on between the two of you, and all those things. It shows a lack of discipline, a lack of focus, and a lack of prioritizing what's really important in your life. All of that shows a lack of maturity. You want to have a child, I implore you to address these things with yourself before you bring <laughs> another child into the world who's simply going to emulate the two of you. It'll make all the problems worse right now. So until you resolve all of these things, sir, in your marriage, and that means the two of you have some personal work you need to do with yourselves. You partying like rock stars like you're 21 years old. But you cannot be upset with her about the fact that you haven't changed her mind about children. That's not fair to her because it is the choice that you made when you chose to marry her. She has a right to make that choice, just like you have a right to make your choice. She is not wrong. You were wrong on this. She didn't mislead you. She didn't keep it a secret. She wasn't ambiguous. She was crystal clear. She is crystal clear. That is her right, sir. The $945 I'm going to order you to work towards paying the amount of the ring that she's asked for. Good luck to both of you. You know, her verdict is not very surprising to me. Um, I'm aware that we have a lot of work to do. I'm just not sure if I'm willing to do it. With Judge Faye's verdict, the lifestyle change, yeah, I understand what she's saying. She's right. We, we are a little older. We shouldn't be partying and doing things like we're doing like we're too young. Separation might really do. It might work. It might help us, you know, because they say time makes the heart fonder if it's apart. So. I'm willing to have children with him. He can have his natural biological kids. I'm just not going to birth them. I want a child with my wife. I don't want to have a child my semen somewhere else with another woman that's not my wife. He's going to have to stop smoking weed. That's, that's all there is to it. He's going to have to quit smoking weed, save the money to buy the ring, or I'm out of here. You say you want commitment from him. And what I'm trying to say to you is when people show you who they are, believe them. If you want to be single, then just be single. And if you want to be in a committed relationship, choose someone who's not going to cheat. Here is today's case. I called the police and the police came and escorted him off my premises. You called the police? But he came back and when he came back, he went to kicking my door down like he broke my door and everything. That's shocking. My biggest issue is that she kicks me out a lot. The two of you have got to stop acting on impulses. 
Your solution cannot be he has to leave the house every time you get upset. Because one time, the next time, the police are called, who, who's to say what's gonna happen? Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Barron versus Felton. Thank you, Juan. Robin Barron. Yes, Your Honor. You have brought your boyfriend to court today, Terrace Felton. Yes, Your Honor. Because you say the two of you have been in a relationship for a number of years, five years, but you are tired of his cheating ways and instability as a partner. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, I'll start with you, ma'am. Give me some background. Well, I met him about five years ago at one of his friends' house. Mm -hmm. And like you said, we've been together for five years. We went through a lot of struggles, but we eventually got better jobs, and now we're doing better. It's the thing is, like, throughout the five years, he's been cheating on me. Mm -hmm. He can't keep a job to save his life, and he's very irresponsible. And I want to marry him. Like, I really do love him, and I just want to get put all the past things that we had to the side so that I can get over it and we can move on and get married. What do you have to say about that, Mr. Felton? Like she said, we've been through a lot of struggles and stuff and things of that nature, you know what I'm saying? So, but in my opinion, it's like we go back and forth, back and forth, and it's like, I may initiate it. You know, I'm not here to say, I'm gonna say, I'm not here to defend anything wrong that I've done. I know that going into, like, after I do something, going into the next phase of, you know, trying to get things back together, it's like we, we can't never let anything go. So it's like a continuous cycle. So even once I do initiate something, we can come back and talk about it and try to, you know, try to get things back together. But it's mm -hmm. like a consistent argument about... Things that have happened in the past? It, yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it's not really in the past, is what you're saying. Yeah, not for really. It's, it ain't left in the past. You well, know what I can saying? tell you it's, something. It's, it's hard for women <laughs> to forget in a lot of instances, based on everything I've, I've read here today. But the two of you have really had a number of issues. Why don't you give me some background on you? Well, my biggest issue is that she kicks me out a lot. Like, when we get into it, like, that's the main thing. It's always, let's break up, get out of my house, and, and things of that nature. And it's, and it's insulting because, like she said, in the beginning, in the beginning of our struggles and stuff like that, like, you know, it was me taking care of us and looking out for us, just like I had an a issue where her and one of my friends don't get along. So we get invited to a party, and as soon as she got there, as soon as she got invited, he flipped her off, flipped her off, gave her the middle finger. Mm. So she come tell me about it, you know. I do not need that visual demonstration. I'm no sorry. I, I, I'm it's okay. so sorry. Go ahead. But yeah, uh, yeah, he, uh, <laughs> like I said, he flipped off off the glitch. She come and tell me about it, and I know she wants me to confront him, but mm -hmm. like, the type of guy that I am and the type of guy that he is, it was gonna turn into something major. And like I said, he is a friend of mine. So I went and I, I expressed to him, like, you know, stay out of her way. Why is he flipping her, your girlfriend off? They do not he like, don't each like other. me. And I they don't, don't like, like him. each other. She don't want me to be his friend. He don't want me to be her boyfriend. So it's like, it's always. So something. you wanted him to do what? Confront him? Yeah, like before the party, me and his friend already got into it at my house because the boy pulled up to my house trying to fight me. And I let him know about it. And he was supposed to take care of it then, which he, he did not. He tried to fight her? Yes, he tried yeah, to fight but me. I'm saying this is the thing like she has she's a, she got a big she, she's got a big thing of like she gonna stand up for herself she's a stand up guy and I'm uh, she's a stand up girl and I mean I love that about it but sometimes too it, it creates problems and it's like I'm the wolf in a sense you know what I'm saying so I know like if a situation gets well taken Mr. Felton one of your friends cannot be pulling up to, to your house to fight your woman <laughs> yeah I know and you that. gotta <laughs> there's I a know. line you have to draw that's the line <laughs> why did that happen why did he want to fight her she has a bad habit of like talking to people kind of rough. You think she instigated it? In a sense. She wasn't wrong because she was just speaking up for herself, but it's just oh, oh, the way she does things. Even when we get into it about certain stuff, it's like she won't just say what's wrong with it. It's always got to be like, ah, and it's like everybody ain't going to take lightly to certain tones and, you know, mm -hmm. everybody's not just going to bow down to your, you know, you yelling and screaming. Some people are going to fight back and be combative back too. Like, every man ain't going to think, well, I'm not going to put my hands on a woman. Every Nobody hears me when I'm nice. You say that you have kicked your boyfriend out of the house at least a dozen times. I don't know how many times I kicked him out, but the last time I kicked him out is because we went to the same person's house, we went to his house to the cookout, and like he said, the dude flipped me off, and then they got into it because I guess he did say something to him about it once they went into the house, but they came outside and we were, everybody was asked to leave. So we left separately because I, after I asked him, I said, you gonna come with me? He was like, no, you go, you know. So I left, and he came back 30 minutes later just screaming, cussing, yelling, took my keys, slammed the door, 
door and he left to go back to the party. At that time, I'm thinking he going to the party and he just going to be there. I invited me some friends over. It got a little late. Everybody went to sleep. Hours later, he came back, unlocked the door. He's screaming, cussing everybody in my living room out. So I wake up and I'm just like, what's wrong with you? Why are you doing all of this? He's yelling, screaming. So he told me, he was like, if you want me to hush, anybody want some sleep, y'all gonna call the police. So that's what I did. You called, called the, police. the police? I called the police and the police came and escorted him off my premises. But he came back and when he came back, he went to kicking my door down like he broke my door and everything. Oh. Did you go back after the police escorted you off the premises? It could have been a lot worse when that call went in. The police escort you off the premises. You go back and you start trying to kick down the door? Yes, Sir? Yes, I did. I did. Why I are did. you kicking I, him out I... over a dozen times every time you get upset? I'm wrong for that, yes, but... Because you keep, you keep just... taking him back, so you obviously yeah. not that upset. It's because I be have... mad for the moment. Like, I don't try to kick him out and say, go and leave forever. It's just when you come to my house, you cuss and scream and, like, disrupting the Don't the, the two of you live together? House. No, we don't live together or not. Right now, but... But you were living together we during were, yeah, these but times. At the same, we was living together, but I pay all the bills. So, it's That's my house. At that point, I well, pay all the bills. Well, whose fault is that? Who's Mine, fault because is that? I, I let myself pay all the bills, but I take pride in that. Because, like he said, before we got good jobs and I started making more money than him, he was taking care of me first. But, I, like I said, I take pride in that. But now, there's lights, water, rent, and all that need to be paid, and he doesn't contribute to none of that. So, and, if, but he, it hasn't if he been... makes me bad, I kick him out. I do, yeah. There's a lot of back and forth with the ex, and I'm sick of that. Like, I am so sick of that. If he's being kicked out repeatedly, do you want him to go out and sleep on the street? He has family. He just don't want to go there. Like I said, I'm the black sheep of my family. They, they, they married. They're Christian people. They're Christian like... I mean, it's just... A... They married and Christian, so... Yeah, they are. Like, everybody... I can't go over there. So, what's going on with the work situation now? Uh, I'm, I'm currently employed, and like I say, I mean, I've been on my own for a long time, you know what I'm saying? And I don't come from just a real bad background. I just made a lot of bad choices coming up as a teenager and stuff, and I started moving real fast, dating real early and stuff like that, dating older women real early and stuff like that, moved out. So, I mean, I've always been having to make my own way, you know? Whatever the case was, I've always done what I felt like I needed to do, and $9 an hour ain't technically add up to what I was used to doing at the time, which, like I'm saying, I don't make it right, but, you know, like, she tell me, you know, I don't want to date a, a thug, I don't want to date this type of person, you know, I want you to get a job, I want you to be professional, whatever, and I, w I would go for it, and, you know what I'm saying, I would get a job, and I would, you know what I'm saying, but then it's like, when I do that, and I can't do the things that I was, I used to do, or I can't do things the way she used to doing it, now I'm being under eye and undermining it. You weren't making situation. enough money. Yeah, because, I mean, like, I mean, I wouldn't even just say not, not making enough money, it's just the fact that I know in a relationship, you know, give or take, whoever's doing the most, like, that's, you know, it's, it's never really 50-50, you right. know what I'm saying, in a sense, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I respect her for, like, when she got her own apartment, she started doing stuff on her own, you know what I'm saying? I was proud of her or whatever, but when I tried to move into the situation, it was never like we was doing it together. It was like, oh, I'm bringing you in on something. When it was like, in the beginning, you know, it wasn't like that. Everything that I was doing, it was like, it was for us. It was like, it wasn't no separation. I didn't just put you out when I got mad at you or something like that. So, you've been on your own since you were 14, 15 years old? Yes, ma'am. Did you finish high school? Yes, ma'am. I actually, like, I had to, I went back, I finished in alternative school. Mm -hmm. whatever. So, you and did? I actually went to college for like a half a semester. A half of a semester? Yeah, hey, yeah, that's, yeah, that's something. It, you, know you do have yeah, some credit. <laughs> yeah, I tried. <laughs> what I was tried. your major? Uh, business information systems. Because okay. I'm, I'm an artist, I do music. So. What kind of music do you do? I'm a singer. Oh, okay. You like to sing R&B? Yes, ma'am. And I rap a little bit too, kind of pop a little bit. I know somebody else who sings R&B. Mm. I think your husband, your husband is something <laughs> like that. He's actually pretty good. Uh, <laughs> Tell I, him I said, what's um, up? This is, um, this is interesting because you said that you've had at least six jobs since yeah. the two of you have been together. You said you were homeless earlier in your relationship. And exactly. that's when you were paying for about 85% of the... Yeah. The, and I wouldn't necessarily say, like, homeless, home. homeless, like, on the street homeless, but I mean, like, we didn't have our own. We were staying from, you know, from different places, different people and stuff like that, and nobody let you stay nowhere for free these days, like, no matter what you got going on. And that and that's the hardest thing to come out. That's what I was trying to get her to understand, too. When you're trying to come out of a hole, you know what I'm saying, like, it's so hard because, like, nobody ain't gonna let you save your money to get no spot to move out. You gotta try to fluctuate and, you know, keep them straight on their end and make sure that we good on our end and then... You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it turns into chaos, like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's... What do you do for a living? 
I'm a correctional officer. Oh, my goodness. Well, the two of you are just a match made in heaven, aren't you? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Robbins. He made a sex tape while we were still together. I cheated, and she found out about me cheating on It eventually got leaked to social media. Here's the issue with the two of you. Because you are so young, and I know age isn't nothing but a number, but y'all are childish. I read in your papers, you say the two of you have cheated on each other yes, in the yes. past. But there's one time in particular you said was particularly troublesome to you. Yes, yes. Tell me about that. Your Honor, he made a sex tape while we were still together. I went through his cell phone and I seen the sex tape with another woman. It eventually got leaked to social media and everybody was contacting me trying to see if I was okay because I was com completely humiliated when I seen it. I didn't know anything about it until I seen it in his phone. But yes, the sex tape was... It was it for me. At that so, moment. who put the tape? I mean, I know you're an R&B singer and a performer, but was there a need to put the put a tape online? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't like that, Your Honor. Um, like I said, I cheated, and she found out about me cheating on her. So she revenge cheated with a friend of hers. You know, she, you know what I mean, whatever. So when she got into a tight spot, I agreed to come back mm -hmm. to Atlanta to try to help her get back on her feet. You know what I'm saying? We, like I said, we both was in a tight spot. Here's before. the issue with the two of you, because you are so young. And I know age isn't nothing but a number, but y'all are childish. Yeah. When one person does something, it's tit for tat with the two of you getting back at each other, trying to do the same thing. I can only hope, because I know this was a while back, that you have grown out of some of those childish ways since you have a child now we to have. teach to be a better human being. Mm. What happened with the car? You said you were ditched for a car. Yes. Um, I had just had our baby, and at that time, I was, we were, I was living at his mother's house. And he was dating his ex only because... This, this is what he told me. He told me that he was only dating her because she promised after she got her income tax that she was going to buy him a car. Like, he left me and the baby at his mama's house for about two weeks. He didn't ever call to check on me, the baby, nothing, until they got into it, and then he wanted to come back home. And see, he always does this with the ex. He's a lot of back and forth with the ex, and I'm sick of that. Like, I am so sick of that. I'm saying, Because like, I don't have no exes to go back and forth with, and he just always have to have I'm her. I'm saying, but you have a family to, to fall back on. Family or not, day, you don't like, need to like go I said, to no other I be woman. on my own a lot of the times, right? Family so or not. So when we get into it, the first thing she want to do is put me out. Of course, like, I ain't got nothing but other women I done dealt with or other homeboys that I know in the no, street. Like, you don't you know have saying? nowhere like, else to go. Yeah, like, no I'm saying... Like, Actually, I, that is an excuse. He doesn't... If he doesn't have family, you know, if he's being kicked out repeatedly, do you want him to go out and sleep on the street? No. Where, where is mama. he supposed to go? He has a mom. He got a sister. He just don't want to go to those places. So, you don't go... He has want... family. He just don't want to go I there. don't go to those places because, like I said, I'm the black sheep of my family. They, they, they married. They're Christian people. They're Christian like... I mean, it's just a lot of ways that I have that they don't accept, that we bump heads, and I mean, it still ultimately end up being the same thing. I'm out. Back those don't sound like terrible people. Yeah, they're not. Uh, That's what, what I'm saying. I'm, saying described, I'm not going to say... Like, I'm not making an excuse for myself. I'm just saying I know that I'm not, I'm not going to say I I'm thought you was about to say they on meth. Mm. No, no, I don't they care. They out no, all no, times no. and night. You know, you know they married and Christian, so... Yeah, they are. Like, so everybody... I can't go over there. They're not fond of the stuff that I do. And I know they, they will always welcome me. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, it ain't that. You know what I'm saying? It's just the fact that I know it's going to eventually end up being the same thing. Ms. Barron, yes, my issue is, you know, there has to be a, another alternative to when the two of you have a disagreement than you repeatedly kicking him out. It's probably the worst thing you can do to someone who really hasn't had a home since he was a teenager. There are no excuses for this because if you either want to be in the relationship or you don't, but 12, 13, 14, 15 times, just go your separate ways if that's what it's going to be because <laughs> one of these days, he may not come back. Well, I don't know. It has been 12. Here's what I find is happening here. And the two of you have a child together. This is dysfunctional. And I do not want your child to see this repeatedly happening in the home. Beautiful family. I don't want your child seeing this because all you're doing <laughs> is normalizing this dysfunction in front of your child. You did not have a man to teach you how to treat a woman. So is this what you're going to teach your son? Or are you going to try to break the cycle? I'm going to try to break it, young. Okay, I want you to work really hard on that, Mr. Felton, because I know you were not dealt an easy hand in life. 
There are certain things that I think you do in this relationship because you simply have not been taught better. No one ever taught you. But now it's not just about you, Mr. Felton. It's about somebody else. I believe that you can have a better life for yourself. You don't want to be caught up in a system that doesn't care anything about you. Because one time, the next time, the police are called, who, who's to say what's going to happen? You don't need to dip a toe into that system, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm asking you, not just for the sake of their relationship, for the sake of your child. The two of you have got to stop acting on impulses and being completely out of control when you're upset with each other. Your solution cannot be he has to leave the house every time you get upset. What are you going to do to build a foundation for your future? You either pay now or you pay later. So you make the sacrifices now so your later is better. Pay now. Ms. Barron? Yes, ma'am. You got to stop with this fighting and you got to stop with this aggression. And you have to stop encouraging him to try to fight somebody because they flipped you off. And I want you to both look over at that picture because that above everything else is worth fighting for. And that's real. And that's what the two of you have created together. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, you understand, Ms. Barron? Do you yes, understand, sir. Mr. Felton? Yes, Your Honor. Because I think what's happening here, the personal demons that you brought into the relationship have overshadowed the normalcy that you've tried to have. We have an aftercare specialist here in divorce court that I want the two of you to have a conversation with after we leave here today. But that's how we're going to resolve this. Both of you have to take personal responsibility for what you are bringing into each other's lives. You're going to have to deal with it. You're going to have to face it because it's causing problems. You're 26 years old and it's continuing to cause problems in your life because you haven't addressed it. And I don't want to see you for the rest of your life, Mr. Felton, living pillar to post. I don't want to see that. Good luck to both of you. I feel like her verdict was very fair. It wasn't leaning on his side more or mine. I do need to work on not kicking him out every time I get mad. I'm gonna try to go to the other room or go outside or something. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna kick him out no more because I don't want him to go nowhere anyway because she right. What if I do kick him out, he'll never come back. I'm gonna be looking stupid. And I agree with just about everything she said. Well, really everything she said, you know, she right. I mean, I do got a lot of personal issues and stuff that I need to deal with. So I'm going to just try to work on that. I mean, just be there for me more. And I'm going to try to do that for you, you know, be more understanding and patient with you, you know, because I know I'm a little more laid back, you're a little bit more fiery than I am. And just try to be more mindful about my decision the first time around. say you want commitment from him. And what I'm trying to say to you is when people show you who they are, believe them. If you want to be single, then just be single. And if you want to be in a committed relationship, choose someone who's not going to cheat. Here is today's case. I've caught my boyfriend cheating with multiple women and I am just tired of his cheating ways. I am not cheating and I'm tired of her insecure ways. I heard that he gave an ex money, so I know he's cheating. I gave someone money for a loan, but not sex. I am suing today for custody of a dog that was gifted to me. Since I paid the most, I think I should have custody of the dog that I paid for. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, as you know, for the first time on Divorce Court, we have a virtual audience, and it's filled with your super fans. Today's super fan of the day is Antoinette from Coffeyville, Mississippi. Hi, Antoinette. Welcome to Divorce Court. We're so happy to have you with us. 
Your Honor, today's case is Trené versus Didis. Thank you, Juan. Dominique Trené. Yes, Your Honor. You have brought Mr. Joseph Didis. Yes, Your Honor. To court today, you are suing over the custody of a dog. Correct, ma'am? Yes, Your Honor. I understand the two of you have been in a relationship for a year, but you've had a number of issues already. Yes, Your Honor. Now you're in divorce court and you want to talk about them here today. Yes, Your Honor. I'll start with you, Ms. Trené. Give me some background. Yes, so me and Joseph, we met at Olive Garden like a year ago. Mm -hmm. I was a waitress, he was a line cook, and it just kind of, you know, we just naturally clicked, I guess, mm -hmm. because of the universe and the energy that brought us together. Mm -hmm. and, and the breadsticks. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's how we met, and I, like, heard rumors that he, like, had a fiancé, but when I asked him, he was like, no, like... Well, it's not true. So I'm like, okay, everything is good. You know, we're Gucci. Until we started dating, you know, I'm. Let me, let me, before you go into the problems in the okay. relationship, let me ask Mr. Didis. Yes. Tell me, give me some background on how the two of you met and how'd you end up here today? I mean, she, she's pretty much spot on. I mean, we did meet at Olive Garden. Um, I actually heard rumors that she wanted me. So. Mm -hmm. You know, we went out a couple times and then one thing led to another. Next thing you know, um, she moved in probably about five, six months later. Mm -hmm. And then now we here. Unfortunately, she's just accusing me of, of cheating, lying, always asking me about my whereabouts, mm -hmm. asking me about where my money going and everything. So this is where we at. Why did you end up here? What's the breakdown in the relationship? Joseph is a very sociable person. He's very people friendly and he can be very flirtatious when it comes to women. Girl, I know you lying. You know, there have been multiple occasions where he has gone out for a late night, coming back home after he said he's been somewhere, um, random numbers, calling the phone. We don't really know. Oh, I don't know. Are so you, you gonna... start to get suspicious? Correct. Well, let me um, ask you something. When you heard the rumors at work, right. were any of those things true? No, Your Honor, I was not. You, you well, that's not what convincing. I heard from the source's mouth. Were there any truth to the rumors? Yes, Your Honor. There was definitely truth to the rumors. Did you confront him about it? Yes, I did. And what happened? There was a number calling his phone. He said he didn't know who it was. The same number I found out was his ex... That he decided to spend Valentine's Day with, and that he decided, oh, yeah, you need help with your bills? Here, let me spot you $1,000. I know you say she's lying. She I'll lied. give you an opportunity to respond. You're in a relationship with him and the two of you are living together? Correct. He doesn't spend Valentine's Day with you? Um, no, he had to work. You know, when he's gone and he takes the car, I mean, I'm not, like, an insecure woman, so mm -hmm. I don't really, So like... you believed him when he said he had to work? Right, until all of these things started popping up out of nowhere. Were you at work on Valentine's Day? I worked during the, during the day. So I drove, I drive trucks, Your mm -hmm. Honor. So I drove from like eight in the morning to like nine at night. Dominique, she was at work. What did you find out that led you to believe he spent Valentine's Day with his ex instead of you? I basically went through his phone and I found the number and I called the number myself. The number was his ex who also co-signed on his car who he also was staying with when he told me he was staying with Tito. Tito doesn't even live here. Who is Tito? That's my cousin, Your Honor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, just another person that's probably covering for him and lying for him. But yeah, this is the same lady. What did she tell you when you called the number? She told me, Joseph is my ex. We've been together for five years. We came down here together to live together. I co-signed on his car. He co-signed on my car. Sir? What's going on? It was a loan. Just a loan. That's Why it. Why are you lying? So you, you loaned her $1,000? She, she had, she had texted me. Did she pay it back? Yeah. She did pay it back? I need all my money. Okay. Every dollar. And then did she, did you spend Valentine's Day with her? No, I did not. So that part was a lie? That's a lie. I went there... On Valentine's Day. On Valentine's Day, Day to give talk. her the money. Did not talk. Ma'am. Make sure you say... So you that. went there on Valentine's Day to give her the money, to loan her the money? It was just a... Coincidence. That's all that it was. Mm -hmm. So you didn't know that he and the ex co-signed? No, I did not. On a car together, and that she that I was riding around in another woman's car. It's like, my it's my car, Your Honor. It ain't even. It, I pay for it. 
It's, like in my, it's in my name. I'll pay for it. Insurance in my name. So no, stop. it's not. Stop. It's not. Her name okay. is on it as well. Okay, so you find out about that. You find out that he loaned her $1,000. She just happened to be on Valentine's Day. Right. So these are the things you're really upset about. And then the third thing you talk about is communication. She's not ready to be married and have children. You don't be one to be waiting that long. Everything start going south on a man and a woman. Joseph was unemployed for like a month and he blew 20 grand. I don't understand how you would want to have a child, but you're blowing 20 stacks in a month. We usually like have movie night or we'll have like game night where we'll just play the Xbox and you know, drink wine, whatever. And one time, like, this number called his phone, and he went outside, and I was just like, okay, that's weird. Why is he going outside to talk on the phone? Like, oh, I, I gotta take this. Like, okay, take it in front of me. Like, that's weird. We've never done that before. Mm -hmm. But um, he basically told me that his cousin had to go to the hospital, mm -hmm. and um, he needed to bring his kids, or, or, yeah, his kids with him. And so I was like, Oh, well, you know, do you want me to go with you? And no, I didn't, I didn't go. You didn't, didn't believe him that he was going to the hospital? I mean, at the time, yeah, I did. I, I really thought, who makes up something like that? Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, did you find out that it wasn't true? Yeah, because I found out it was her, because she also told me that on the phone call that we had. Is that true, sir? I wasn't there for that conversation, but no. Nah, I, I, so I took a family member call. So if we having game night, Your Honor. Are you kidding? I'm not going to... Just be like, hey, you know, and talk on the phone. In front of her, we watching game. I don't, we I don't have a go, problem with that. You walk you out know, to take your call. Yeah, did you right. take those kids to the hospital for your cousin? Yeah, that, that, yeah, yes, I did. You yes, don't I sound did. very No, convincing. that was, that's, that's spot on. I did, I did, Your Honor, oh, I did. Is that where you were? Okay, yes. so this ex of yours, is she just trying to pour salt on your relationship? Is she trying to cause problems? I can't. Yes, yes, she is, Your Honor. Because she's yes, telling she her a lot of information and she's believing her. I mean... Why'd you loan someone money who's looking to sabotage your relationship and telling your current girlfriend things that you say are not true? I loaned her the money before that conversation. That conversation. Yes. That so conversation what's your relationship had... like with this ex now? Oh, I don't, talk, I don't speak to her at all. At all. Because of this? Because of this, that, and the other thing. You know, Your Honor, if I might add something, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. um, speaking on you know, his sneaky whereabouts. Um, Joseph smokes black and milds, which is something that I feel like in our relationship, I compromise, because I feel like that's a gross habit. Anyways, he would go out and say that he's going to the gas station to get black and milds. Now, usually it's like a 30 minute trip because he smokes them outside. He knows I don't like the smell. Well, you know, there's been a few nights where he would actually just come in in the morning, you know, and I wouldn't even know. The next morning? Yes, and be asleep on the couch. Mm. Where were you going? I would go to the gas station or, I, you know. All night. It Hanging wouldn't be all night, the gas station. I gotta be to all work right. in the morning. Mm -hmm. So why am I gonna be up all night till two, three, four in the morning and then turn around and get up at six? When you left to go get yeah. the black and miles, were so you I coming was... back early in the morning? You was at Tito's no. house? No, sometimes, sometimes you know, my cousin called me your cousin, you want to come over, whatever, God things. I'd be like, yeah, I go over there, watch the game, or you know, anything like that. But she thinks when I do that, I'd be cheating and I'd be here and I'd be Why do you there. think she's so suspicious of your whereabouts now? I'm not, I don't be cheating on her when I be doing this, that she be talking about that I be all out, all types in the morning. Because before no. that, you didn't have any problems? You didn't, you, the two of you didn't have any trust issues before that? But it was Nothing. that phone call yeah, that I don't triggered know everything. Call. Call. I don't know if it was a phone for call. For the two of you. I just know it was around that time. Who makes up something like that? Like, you know what I'm saying? This is the cousin that you're talking about? That you had to go to the hospital? No, I got a, um... Oh, that, that <laughs> time. Oh, no, it's, it's no, more no, than no, one. no, I got no. more than this one. This is talking about. I got more like... than... Well, this is just... How many Tito's cousin. do you have in your family? I mean, this is... <laughs> this is what... <laughs> Your issue is, you ready to have children? I mean, yeah, Your Honor, I do. I'm 28 years old. I don't have any kids. So, I mean, you know, in the near future, yes, I would like to have children. Have that you might... discussed this with your girlfriend? The yeah, future? We, 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 that don't be all the time. It's all it, the time. it don't be all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, 
we might watch a movie. She'll say, oh, look at the baby, or, or we it might be on, you know, baby fever, anything like that. But, yeah, I, I do want kids. And because you said that's an issue. It. Right now, she said she doesn't have time for kids because she's in school and she's not ready to be married and have children. I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna wait until she's 35 and I'm 40 something years old. Well, I'll be 40 years old Why not? And, and nah, I mean, that's, you know, there's nothing wrong with waiting, mm -hmm. but you don't be one to be waiting that long. Mm -hmm. You know, everything start going south on a man and a woman. Then, you know. And how do you problem. feel about this? Joseph is not very, like, responsible. Um, Joseph was unemployed for, like, a month and he blew 20 grand. So mm -hmm. I don't understand how you would want to have a child, but you're blowing 20 stacks in a month because you're unemployed. Mm -hmm. We don't even have bills that much, which is another reason why I feel like he's been cheating. Who's your witness, sir? You brought a witness with you today, uh, Mr. Hector Sepulveda. Yes, that's my cousin, Your that's, cousin. Uh, that's Tito. Oh, this is short. Tito. I, yeah. Oh, Tito is here. Yeah, yes. Great. Let's bring out Mr. Sepulveda. Juan, would you bring in the witness? Absolutely. I can't wait to hear what he has to say. Me either. Is that right here? Mr. Sepulveda, how are you? Good morning, Your Honor. Thank you for being here today. I understand that you have some testimony you'd like to offer to the yes. court. I'd love to hear from you, sir. So, he's a good dude. He's an honest dude. That's how we were raised. And uh, he started kicking it with uh, Dominique. He moved out to Atlanta, and uh, he started his life out here. And I used to... I, I come out here frequently to fly out because he don't have nobody out here. So, I come out here and I chill with him. We'll go out, have a good time. A couple times we do go out, and she'll blow his phone up. I don't get in it. That's his business. Mm -hmm. We drive trucks, and we do, we'll do. we we'll go out. If I don't feel like driving, we'll, we'll get a room. I'll get a room on me. Let me I, ask you something. You have children? Who, me? Yes. No. I thought you're, you're Tito? They call you I Tito? Am. What? I gotta wow. go. <sighs> <laughs> what happened? Because I just... You well, like, what? was there... Did you have to go to the hospital at some point? Jeans to lie. I've never, like, I've never uh, been to a hospital in Atlanta. The lying. This is the cousin that you're talking about? That you had to go, go to the hospital? No, that, I got... With, with I, his kids? Yes, Your Honor. Sir? I got a... Um, oh, that... <laughs> That time. Oh, no, 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 no,
A breeder. A so you went breeder. to a breeder, private breeder, you got the dog. I did. So you put down $500 for the dog? Yes, Your Honor. And, and Mr. Dennis, you paid for the rest, am I right? Yes. And so now the two of you are arguing over who gets the dog after the breakup, am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. Juan, would you please bring in Mr. Simba? Can you bring him <laughs> to me? Hello, Simba. Well, Simba is the most well-behaved in court today, just so you all know. I tried. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. I believe, Mr. Dedis, that you got this dog because Ms. Trinae wanted to get the dog. She brought up the idea, she told you it's what she wanted to do, and the only reason you have this dog is because Ms. Trinae asked for the dog. And I'm gonna have Juan to return the dog to Ms. Trinae. Your Honor, well, 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 Your Honor, Your Honor, Your Honor. I'm finished. As for their relationship, the two of you are gonna have to figure out a lot of things. You don't trust each other. A lot of it sounds very petty to me, based on where I sit and what that I hear in this petty, courtroom Betty. every day. That is petty, petty. Well, so you and have you're to decide how much pettiness, sir, if it's so petty to you, you have to decide how much pettiness you're willing to take. You don't trust him for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Perhaps it was the phone call from someone he used to date. Perhaps it was the Valentine's Day visit where you loaned $1,000. 20 grand going away in a month. No, but come on. If you choose to go your separate ways, the dog goes with Miss Trinae. So what about that the rest of the money? As for your $1,500, you're asking about it, it was a gift. You don't get gifts back, you only get loans back. You didn't loan her the $1,500 to get the dog, you gifted it to her. That is my ruling. Good luck to both of you. I don't get nothing out of it. Can I at least hold him? No. Come on, baby. <laughs> I feel like Judge Faith's verdict was very honest, it was true, and it was respectable. When it comes to Judge Faith's verdict, she should never gave it a dog. You know, after the way that he just acted in that courtroom, I'm definitely, like, just done. Like, I don't want any pettiness in my life. I'm on to bigger and better things. Once you hit a boiling point, enough is enough, and it's time to move on. I'm taking my dog, and we're leaving. Do I get my money back for the dog? No, you may not. I want you to get out of my life, get out of my face, and leave us alone. So when are you getting out, then? What am I getting out of what? My house. Uh, tomorrow. Bye. Bye. you know a relationship is a good relationship for you. It makes you feel better about yourself, not worse. It makes you feel more loved. So if you are not getting those things, it's a relationship you can't be in. Here is today's case. So you're saying he's taking weekend trips without you? Yes, weekend trips, going back home to Florida. I have a business connection in Florida. Ask what his connection is. What do you think it is? He's recently linked up with one of his exes, okay? I think this woman's delusional, if you ask me, Your Honor. I went and financed a ring, and then I set it up for automatic debit out of his account. Okay, well, you can't do that. That's stealing. He didn't give you this ring, you took it. So you're wearing a ring for a proposal that you turned down? You're not engaged. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, as you know, for the first time on Divorce Court, we have a virtual audience, and it's filled with your super fans. Today's super fan of the day is Marcy from Nebraska. Hi, Marcy. Welcome to Divorce Court. We're happy to have you here with us. Your Honor, today's case is Williams versus Patterson. Thank you. Teresa Williams. Hello, Your Honor. Hi. You have brought Mr. Garrett Patterson to court today. You are suing for $8,823. You say he owes you on a motorcycle. What? The two of you finance together. And you are countersuing, sir, for $2,500 for a ring. That's correct? correct, Your Honor. Okay, I'll start with you, Ms. Williams. I understand the two of you are engaged or were engaged, but now you are not on the best of terms. We were together for like six years. We moved in together um, three, three and a half years ago. 
We started a business together. And then he just started, you know, taking off, leaving on the weekends, not answering his phone, um, not checking in with his woman, like, or the business. Like, who does that? Like, somebody that's not being faithful does. So you're saying he's taking weekend trips without you? Yes, weekend trips, going back home to Florida. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when he's supposed to be working with me to build this business. I am working. What do you say is going on, Mr. Patterson? I do go to Florida, Your Honor. I mean, we built this business together, okay? So our agreement was, at least I thought our agreement was, okay, you run the operational side, I run the sales. I can't be in two places at one time like Bobby Walmart said. <laughs> Girl, I can't be in two places at one time, so what you want me to do? You want me to be in I'm Florida? Sorry, you said that? Bobby Walmart. Yes, okay. Yeah. Okay. So now I can be, I could be here in Atlanta trying to run the business or I could be in Florida where my connections are. So, you are from Florida. So, you say you go back and forth to Florida because that's where your family is, and also the two of you have this business that you're trying to build and grow. I have a business connection in Florida. Ask what his connection is. Well, Ms. Williams, what do you think it is? I found from his Facebook page. He's recently linked up with one of his exes, okay? Now, this is not just any ex. This is somebody that he had planned to marry a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So now they're connected again, and he's with her. I know he's with her. How is she the connection when I am the business? The business is here in Georgia. We need to take care of home first, and then we can branch out. That's what we need to do, and we need to work you, on each other. Do you other. have any other evidence that he is seeing this woman again other than him accepting a Facebook friend request, ma'am? Well, and then, the fact that she lives in Florida along with millions of other people? Well, the, one of the things is, you know, when we first met, I mean, our sex life was just like... It was just off the chain. I mean, we had sex all the time. And now, do when they first since he's there. been going to Florida every weekend... When he comes back, he's too tired. I mean, we can't do anything. We can't even get it on no more, you know? So, Mr. Patterson, what do you say is going on here? Where, where do you think these accusations are coming from, sir? First of all, I think this woman's delusional, if you ask me, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, when I do come back, sometimes I do be tired. Mm -hmm. But it's not because I'm seeing some little woman uh, well, having sex think, with somebody. Well, what do you think the basis of these... Because, obviously, when, when someone starts making accusations and she's connected the dots to a specific person, usually it's the result of something else happening in the relationship. What do you think is going on that's now triggered these unfounded accusations as you claim that they are? Well, I think because both of us are still working. I mean, we're both working hard trying to build the business. So, I mean, there's got to be a give and take there somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So, she got to understand that what I'm out there doing... I mean, when I do come back and I do try to have sex with her, it's like she tired. I'm tired. So, both I of you are saying that each other is tired. That's what have I'm you, saying. On these trips to Florida, mm -hmm. have you met up with this ex? Yes. She's the one that's helping me with the business. Yeah. So, have you been going to Florida now, recently, more than, than when you first started the business, sir? Well, not... As much. Because now she's... The connection, she's starting to have them help me break other connections in other areas and other cities. Okay. So, you do go to Florida more now, correct, than you did when the two of you were first seeing each other, now that you're working with this ex who's located there? Look. Yes. Am I correct, I didn't sir? mean to say look, Your Honor, but... Yes. Am I correct, Is she sir? talking oh, to me, like... okay? Hey, hey, hey. Miss... Uh, Mr. Williams, this is a yes or no question. It's not a, it's not a trick. I just want to know. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Has Miss Williams ever been introduced to this ex? Has, have you ever invited her to go on any of these business trips with you since the two of you are building together? No, I haven't. Okay. Why is that, sir? Because she's supposed to stand back and run the operation while I take care of the sales part. And of that's me. the agreement between the two that's of the you? Agree well, that's the agreement I thought we had. But, she, I mean... I <laughs> I think she could be cheating on me, too. How, I mean, she... how am I going to so, be back here taking on, care of the on. business and you're taking care of her? You know, I need to be See, taking care of... See, that's another accusation that she hasn't proven yet. I, that's why I say I think she could be cheating, too, now. Because what? when I come back, she tired. She, why she don't want to do it with me? Mm -hmm. I'm too tired. Come on. Well, both of you are accusing each other of being tired when you get back from Florida. So that issue has been resolved. He proposed to me with this little tiny ring. So what did you say? I told him not at this time, and I went and purchased a better ring. 
And that rain don't look no bigger than the one that's on that. Actually, it is slightly bigger, but that's neither here nor there. That's not the point. Do you have anything else to support that there's something else happening no, besides no. just the coincidence no. of the timing of no. these trips? He says that I don't like to engage in oral sex with him anymore. And I don't anymore because he's sharing it with somebody else. You, but you don't know uh, that. So you, you proposed, am I right, sir? Yes, ma'am. How long ago was that? That was like a year ago. That was a year ago? Yes. And why haven't the two of you gotten married? Because. because she says the ring that I gave her was too small. What happened? We were out with our friends, out to dinner, and he proposed to me with this little tiny ring that you could barely see at all, and he embarrassed me in front of all of my friends because he has the means to do much better. And when you present me with the little ring and ask me to marry you and you can do better... I mean, that's just showing me that you don't really value my love, value our relationship. And so you saw the ring and you didn't like it immediately? I did not like the So what ring. did you say? I told him not at this time. Um, you know, maybe we could talk about it a little later. I didn't want to, you know, get into it in front of the friends and all because of that. Because of the size of the ring? Because of the size of the ring. So you turned down his proposal because I sure you did. didn't like the ring? I sure did, because he know me and he knows what I like, and we even looked at rings together. Do you have yeah. the ring with you today? I do not have the ring with me today. Okay, but where's the ring? What I've done is I traded it in, and I went and purchased a better ring. And <laughs> oh, no the one that I like. <laughs> let, let, me, let me see the ring. Juan, would you okay. hand me the ring? <clears throat> now, how did you go about... What do you mean you went and purchased? Well, what I did is... Um, I went and financed the ring, and then I set it up for automatic debit out of his account. Okay, so you went without his permission? I sure did. Okay, well, you can't do that. That's stealing. You can't go in someone's bank account and access their account. But he gave and me take money to out. account. Well, does it matter? He did not give you permission to purchase a ring with it, did you, sir? No, Your Honor, I didn't. That's problematic. What happened at the proposal when she turned you down? I felt embarrassed, you know. So her whole thing is she like to keep up with the Joneses. We're not the Joneses, okay? You know, we're going to live like the Williams and the Pass and whatever, but we ain't living like the Joneses when I'm not fronting on nobody. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to live by my means mm -hmm. when I'm not living above my... And that's her problem. She want to live above her means mm -hmm. knowing. To, yeah, you, he know what I like. Yeah, I know what you like. But just because I know what you like, that don't mean I have to get it for you at that particular time. Mm -hmm. Did you propose again? What happened? No, I haven't proposed again. Okay. So you, the two of you are not engaged, according to you. Exactly. Yes, we are not. So why are you wearing the ring? It is clear to me that this ring is more important than an actual engagement. I love this man. I really, really do. But No, apparently you love a two-carat diamond more than you love Mr. Patterson. You could have accepted that proposal because I'm going to tell you something. It's not where you start. It's where you finish. So you're wearing a ring for a proposal that you turned down? You're not engaged. I turned it down, but maybe hopefully one day when we find out if he's cheating or not, then I would accept the proposal. Well, you're yeah. wearing... But you're wearing an engagement ring. What, are you trying to manifest another proposal? Because it hasn't happened yet. Yeah. So what are you well, telling people? You walking around saying you're engaged? I just love the <laughs> ring. I like bling. That's... I just so, love bling. So it is clear to me that this ring is more important than an actual engagement. Because it didn't happen the first time because you turned it down. It hasn't happened a second time, but you're wearing a ring. You do understand that, that there are two things that have to happen for an actual engagement to take place, which means you accept a proposal, and then, according to you, you get a ring. You have one without the other in both of those instances. But Your Honor, I love this man. I really, really do, but... No, apparently, you love a two-carat diamond more than you love Mr. Patterson. Your Honor, I do love him. I just don't want him cheating on me. I just want to know the you truth. Have, but, so, you don't want him cheating on you, but you're wearing an engagement ring, putting out into the entire world that the two of you are engaged? Yes, I mean... So I... you are fronting. The, and the one that he actually gave you, you, you dismissed it, not because you thought he was cheating, but because you thought the diamond was too small. 
that and he, I, I know he's cheating. I, I really do. I feel it in my heart. I know that he's cheating because he's never there. But somehow, apparently, if that, if that ring at the proposal would have been two carats, somehow you would have looked the other way is what you're telling me here today. Mm. Yes, Your Honor. What did you do when you find out that she financed another ring by going into your bank account without your permission to do so? Well, first of all, Your Honor, I almost lost it, okay? Um, and I, I actually, like, like you said, it's stealing, so I started to almost press charges. But I said, you know what? I'm not gonna go that route yet. Um, it's supposed to be in a joint account, and anytime we go on into that account, we're supposed to get each other's permission. Mm -hmm. I didn't give her permission to do that because she wanted a bigger ring. And that ring don't look no bigger than the one that's on that. Actually, it is slightly bigger, but that's neither here nor there. That's not the point. Can I say something, Your Honor? Tell me about your lawsuit, ma'am. Okay, so I went ahead and I financed a motorcycle for him, okay? And this man has not made two consecutive payments as of today. He what happened? Not. You said you missed a payment, and what happened? I may have not made the payments on time, Your Honor, but I have made the payments. Why are you late on the payments? Just negligence. That's all. Just negligence on my part. You know, just forgetting the dates or whatever. And the two of you have been together for a number of years. Yes, so yeah. you have a background and a history. You know what his financial history is like. So why go in together on a motorcycle if you say he's not going to be fiscally responsible? Because I love him. He wanted it. He wanted that motorcycle. He promised me that he was going to make the payments on time. But he hasn't missed a payment. He just hasn't made them on time. And the motorcycle is right. in both of your names. Am I correct? The motorcycle is in mine. I went in... It's, the motorcycle is in your name, but he's making the payments. That's the arrangement. He's making the made. payments, yes. Okay. You are countersuing for $2,500. Yes. What is that exact amount for? That ring that's on your desk, Your Honor. Because that was $2,500 withdrawn out of your account as a deposit on this ring. You're correct. Okay, I think I've heard enough. Is there anything else either of you want to say? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I have a video that I submitted in the evidence that I would like for her to hear in court. Okay. Let's play the video. Hi, right, Teresa. Look, I just wanted to let you know, even though we've been together off and on for six years, we've had our ups and downs. We've been through our ins and outs. But we're just going in separate directions. And this is not continuing to work for me. So I hope that, you know, we can get through this thing and still be business partners. Mm. But I just wanted to let you know that this relationship, I'm done. I'm over with it. I can't handle it. I can't take it no more. I'm done, sweet. Okay. That just goes to prove that you was cheating all along. That's I accept it. Well, Ms. I, Williams, that doesn't prove that he was cheating. It just it proves that he doesn't want to be in a relationship. And I have to tell you, there are a lot of men who will probably feel the same way, given the value that you put on the size of the ring instead of the amount of the love. I have no sufficient evidence that just because he's going to Florida that he has another relationship going on in Florida. But I do have sufficient evidence that you unlawfully took money out of his bank account. And when it comes to rings, for you, size matters. $8,823 you're suing for, you want him to pay the full remaining balance of the motorcycle, I'm not going to require him to do that. The motorcycle is in your name. Those payments have to be made, and they should be made on a timely fashion, but if you want him to be responsible, refinance the motorcycle and take it out of your name and put it into his name. That's what you have to do. On the $2,500, this is where this case gets interesting from a legal standpoint. Because in every other incident, when you give someone a gift, by law, you can't get that gift back, except when it comes to engagement rings. There are two things that happen here. He didn't give you this ring, you took it, number one. Number two, even if he gave it to you, because he just ended the relationship legally, you would be required to return that gift of a ring, because an engagement ring is given in contemplation of marriage. So on his lawsuit, he actually prevails under the law. Wow. $2,500 or the ring, and I'm gonna ask one to hand you back the ring, sir. That ring belongs to you. Thank you, Your Honor. So I lost the ring and my man. There you go.
That's what happens in life sometimes, Ms. Williams. Okay. What you could have done at the moment that he proposed, instead of rejecting him in front of all of those people, if you actually wanted to accept the proposal, you could have done it. You could have accepted that proposal and then had a private conversation with him. I, I still think it would have been tacky to talk about the size of the ring. That's not what you did. So, yes, you are leaving court today with no ring and no man. Because I'm going to tell you something. What you did embarrassing him in front of all of your friends when he proposed to you, that humiliated him. And it is unsurprising that he doesn't want to continue in this relationship because in that moment in time, you told him what was more important to you, flexing in front of your friends mm -hmm. and flexing before the public instead of saying yes to the man who told you he wanted to build something with you and he would get you a bigger and better ring as time goes on. Do you know how many people do that, by the way? He never... They take... They, they get an engagement ring and over time they actually go and get a bigger ring together. A lot of people do that. And because it's about the growth of the relationship. It's not where you start. It's where you finish. And I hope you learned that today. Good luck to both of you. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor. I respect her verdict, but I don't agree with it because I love this man and he could afford a better ring. When it comes to Judge Faith's verdict, I thank her for giving me favor in this, in this situation. So um, going forward, I know how to handle things further on in life. That's my ring. I deserve... I spent six years with this man, putting up with his stuff, you know, infidelity, all of that, for six years, and I can't get a ring? You, you still haven't proven the infidelity. I, I know. You know you can afford a better Teresa, ring. It's not about you, the yes, ring, yes. because it was about the ring. When you went and got that one, you would have brought it back to me and said, well, look... I bet you give her look. a better ring. I bet you give her one. So you still focusing on yeah, her. I am. today to be the day you break the cycle in your life in these failed marriages this brought you to court for the fifth time i want you to choose to break that cycle today here is today's case i'm tired of teresa not appreciating me and being materialistic robert needs to get tough and stop being so sensitive she doesn't respect me or my religion he's using this new religion to get out of showering me with gifts Teresa doesn't accept my children, and she creates drama with my ex. Robert's ex does not respect our relationship. I will not marry Teresa just to get a divorce soon after. He needs to understand that I do love his children and only want the best for them. Teresa needs to get her act together, or I'm out. The court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, today's case is Reed versus Moore. Thank you, Juan. Mr. Bob Reed. Yes, Your Honor. You have brought Ms. Teresa Moore. Yes, Your Honor. To court today. You are suing, sir, for $5,700 you say she owes you. $1,000 for money for a wedding venue. Yes, Your Honor. That you retained, and also $4,700 the value of an engagement ring. Yes, Your Honor. The two of you were engaged for two years. Now you're here in divorce court. Give me some background, sir. Well, Your Honor. I'm fed up. I'm fed up. Teresa is ungrateful. Mm. She's unsupportive. The negatives outweigh the pluses. And I'm, I, I've had it up to here, Your Honor. What do you have to say about that, Ms. Moore? He's dramatic. Mm. Right. And not telling the truth. The two of you have been together a long time, seven years. Yes. Yes, Your Honor. And you... So, after five years, you proposed. Yes. So, that's a long time to get to know someone, sir. I agree. So, wh what happened? So, after five years, the two of you have been together, you decided to move forward with marriage. And now you end up here. That was a part of the problem that I waited five years. Mm. She, ne she has never given me any credit for actually 
proposing after five years. She feels that she forced me to do that, and, and that's the reason why she's upset, because I waited so long to propose in the first place. Well, did she force you? No, no, not, not at all. I did it out of, out of love, out of merit. I, I loved her, like you said, but that was a part of the problem. She, she was breaking up with me all throughout the relationship. I was, I was trying to make sure that this is what I wanted, and this is what we, we wanted to do moving forward. Mm -hmm. So you wait five years, mm -hmm. and then you decide you're sure this is what you want. And, and I proposed to her. But you end up breaking up anyway. Well, tell me about the proposal. Okay, so first of all, like I said, we, we, I waited five years, and she kept, she kept making sly remarks. You know, we'd be at family gatherings, and, and she's like, I'm presenting to her like, like the ring. I'm telling everybody that we're engaged. I'm happy. And she's saying things like, it's about time. So people were saying congratulations, and her response was about time. Yes. Ms. Moore, is that what you were saying? No. To the people? No, I was you, not. You never said it's about time to anyone when they... No. When they mentioned the proposal. Were you happy that he proposed? I was very happy, Your Honor. I want... This is my... I believe this is my soulmate. So right. you're shocked and appalled that you're here in divorce court. Exactly. Well, how, how do you think you got here? Because he's dramatic. And, you know, it's like... It's a difference in saying, it's about time, then it's about time. You know? No, it's not that much of a difference. <laughs> exactly. It, it, your Honor, <laughs> exactly. it's like, you know, you know, I'm excited about it. I wouldn't... I didn't have an attitude with it. Mm -hmm. Like, it's... Mm, you know? I said, it's about time. Your Honor? So, that bothered him. Did he tell you that that bothered him, that, that you didn't seem to be as happy about the engagement? You were more so still harboring a, a little bit of a grudge? I think that's what he's I... saying. I wasn't. I was... I'm sarcastic. What well, happened I'm over the course of the... I'm quirky What like happened that. over the course of the five years? He said the two of you were breaking up over this issue. What was their relationship like? I, I never broke up with him, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a lie. I never broke up with him. That's a lie. I... That's a lie, Sir? Your Honor. Bob, I did not break up with you. That's a lie. What do you say was happening? Your Honor, here, here's a great example. My mom, who was very dear to me, she just passed away recently. I'm sorry I'm, to hear I, that. I grew up as... I'm a mama's boy, I, I must admit. Me and my mom was very close. Mm -hmm. She has a ring that, that I wanted to keep in the family and I wanted to pass along and she wanted me to use that as, as the ring. I approached uh, Teresa with this idea and, and she was like, no. Uh, I, I, like, she was like, 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 she was too good for, to have, like, a, a family ring. She wanted to have a new ring. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, was all, it was always something. She was never satisfied. Mm -hmm. and, and, and she made me feel so small now, but I brought it to her in a hypothetical situation, so she never really knew how I felt about that. Mm -hmm. Because of that, you know, I held back because it was hypothetical, but that really hurt my feelings. Well, maybe you should have been more upfront and honest about the real reason you were having a discussion with her, not just a hypothetical, but... And I know you say you want to have a surprise with the proposal, but after five years, I have a feeling you and Miss Moore talked about it several times. Yes. Am I right, sir? Yeah, and, and, and this is yeah. a photo of, of which ring? Is that your mother's yes. ring? Your late mother's ring? Yes. Beautiful ring. And so, what was your response to the hypothetical he presented to you? Okay, Your Honor. I was in the middle of cooking our dinner. I was doing a lot of busy things around the house. He came to me with the hypothetical question, and I answered in, um, not knowing that he was talking about his mother's ring or any heirloom. I was just saying in general, because it was hypothetical to me. That's where he presented it to me. And so now he's trying to say, I admit I felt that way about his mother's ring. And that was not how it was presented to me at all. You're materialistic, that's why. How am I materialistic when I would marry you with a, a, a wire around my finger? Valentine's Day, I decked it all out. I'm talking about rose petals, candles. She comes in, what is this? What was the complaint about Valentine's Day? You had a problem with what he planned? No, I did not. She called me the cheap. I did not call... Did, what? Did you hear the word cheap come out yes. of my mouth? You do go ahead and propose. Yes. Correct? Yes, Your Honor. That's correct. Did, did you plan a, a nice proposal? Yes, I did. Uh, here's, here's another thing, Your Honor. She has a tendency of, of hiding her ring, so to say. We were on a After double... the proposal? Yes. So you think for five years you say she pressured you yes. to propose and now she's hiding it? She, she might have pressured me, but that wasn't the reason why, why I gave... I gave in for true love reasons, and it was, and it was time. I, I thought I should, we should give it a go. Mm -hmm. but, when, but when we go out on double dates and, 
and, and I noticed that she's keeping her ring under the table and in her pockets. And she, uh, the excuses that she gives me is that she was cold. Why do you think she's sense. hiding the ring? She's still making me pay for the, for the five years, taking so long to, to finally uh, propose to her. Okay, help me understand this. Okay. Because you would think that if someone finally got engaged after five years of waiting... Right. ...that they would be excited about exactly. it. Exactly. Not do the opposite and hide exactly. the ring. Exactly. So why, would, why do you think she would be hiding the ring, hiding the engagement? In my, in my opinion, it could be a number of things, Your Honor. Like, it's been a lot of changes lately, for example. Recently, I've, I've made changes in my spirituality, and I've been seeking Islam. Okay. And she's, she's not supportive in that arena. I believe because of the fact that I want to go down that road that she's trying to make me pay. Uh, here's another example, Your Honor. Valentine's Day, I, I decked it all out. I'm talking about rose petals, candles, wine, cooked for, nice bread, everything. She comes in, what is this? You know, this is another example of her ungratefulness, Your Honor. What was the complaint about Valentine's Day? You had a problem with what he planned? No, I did not. What was your response to when you walked in and saw the Valentine's Day surprise? I'm like, what is this? Exactly. She called me the... cheap. I did not call... Did, what? did you Moore. hear the word cheap come out of yes. my mouth? Miss Moore? So I... you're saying you were excited. And, yes. And his, and, and his testimony today about you... See, he's... Not being happy about Valentine's Day is completely untrue? He is completely well, he's, untrue. He's, let me, he's let me, using let me my exact you, words with the wrong expression. Well, Ms. Moore... That's what he's doing. I'm gonna tell you something. Really? He's called off the engagement for a reason. Exactly. What do you think that reason is, ma'am? Because I want you to start being forthcoming and honest in court today. Because of all of his exes, all of the women that he's around oh. all the time calling him for stuff, and, and, and he's being there for them... Nah, uh, maybe I have to become an ex in order for him to like me because he's friendly with all of them. Stop it. What do you have to say about that, Mr. Reed? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's totally untrue. She's always, she's always been insecure for some reason. And it's, it's this insecurity that's, with, that's within her, you know. And, and, and it, you know, here's a great example. Like, the mother of my children, she can't stand her. Lies. For, for, on her own, my, the mother of my children has never done anything to her. Mm -hmm. There's a time when my daughter, had, she, she had won a spelling bee, and, and we went to her. We had an award show. And, and everyone was there. I'm talking about everyone was there except her. Mm -hmm. And my daughter wanted her to be there. Mm -hmm. she, refused, she refused to come to the spelling bee. She, she created a scene at a volleyball game of my other daughter. I have two daughters. How did she create a scene? Okay, so the mother of my child, mm -hmm. she wasn't supposed to be there. She actually was on a business trip. So she told me she'll go to this one because she wasn't going to be there. So she, she ended up showing up anyway. Mm -hmm. She ended up getting an early flight. And she thought that that was a setup. She thought that I... I did that on purpose. Like, I knew she was going to be there, mm -hmm. and she was calling me a liar. This is all in the stands in front of everybody. You really? Got yes. to be At your daughter's turn. Yes. No, I did not. And I have a witness in court today who could testify to that. You feel that if she's around, you don't want to be around. How do you build a future like that? They have more than just that they have children relationship. Ms. Bell, do you have any type of romantic or intimate relationship with Mr. Reed at this point? <laughs> Okay, who's your witness, sir? Her name is Mary. Is this the mother this of your This is the mother of my children. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Okay, Juan, would you bring in the witness, please? Absolutely. You're gonna step this way. Let's get to the facts. Hi. Hi. Ma'am, would you please state your name for the record? Mary Bell. And Miss Mary Bell, how do you know Mr. Bob Reed? We have children together. And you, do you also know Miss Teresa Moore? Yes. Who's in court today? Yes. Now, Mr. Reed has been testifying about a, a few of the experiences he's had, specifically one at an event for one of your children, ma'am. Well, what I witnessed at the volleyball game was as soon as I arrived, she left. She seems nice enough. The kids like her, mm -hmm. but she always separates everyone. You know, like, as soon as I'm there, she removes her, you know, she's like, she just removes herself. Mm -hmm. Once the game was over, Robert had to ask me for a ride home, he, you know. Exactly. And, you know, because she left him, you know. Mm -hmm. they, they, they together, they came together. And then, you know, the atmosphere changes. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't say anything to us or the kids the whole ride home. He later told me, you know, she was mad that I was there. Mm -hmm. I'm the mother. I'm supposed to be there. 
Ms. Moore, do you take the position, ma'am, that you only want to be around Mr. Reed and his children if Ms. Bell is not there? Is that your position? I will be there for the children when, they're, when she's not able to be there. So that's there. not my question. You do feel uncomfortable when she's around because you were already at the tournament. You knew that he came with you. He didn't have a ride home, but you left anyway because you were upset. What is it that you were upset about? He always tell me one thing and then something else You were happens. upset because Miss Bell showed up that day exactly. to the tournament. You can just answer the question and be honest. This is, this is the time... I was upset to... that he told me that she wasn't going to be there. And Miss Bell she... testified, ma'am, that she wasn't scheduled to be there, but she arrived early. This is a good thing that she but was able to make... show up for the volleyball tournament. I did not make a scene, as he said. I just left. But you and were, she, you were, and you they're were always upset. together. They're always together. And, and she always um, riding with him or taking okay, him so somewhere. Okay, so it is an issue for you. So it's an issue for you. So just leave me stranded at the volleyball game? That's okay? I know you weren't stranded. Okay. I know she was going to take you. That's okay, though. Mr. Reed, I want you to stop because I think we have a bigger picture of what's happening here. If this is the way you feel, it's the way you feel. But I just want you to be honest when you're answering these questions because if you're building a future with someone, when you're talking about being married with someone and they have children, Ms. Bell isn't going anywhere. By virtue of her relationship with Mr. Reed, you feel that if she's around, you don't want to be around. How do you build a future like that? Your Honor, they have more than just that they have children relationship. Here we go. They have more than that. I don't, you know Here what? Let, you know what? Just to clear the air, I'm going to ask this question. Ms. Bell, do you have a relationship, any type of romantic or, or intimate relationship with Mr. Reed at this point? No, ma'am. Just friends. What do you say to that, Mr. Reed? Exactly what she said. None whatsoever. I, I believe them. None whatsoever. I believe them. When I'm done, I'm and done. And I'm gonna tell you something, because we see a lot of things in divorce court, but it's rare that we see two mature adults who are trying to co-parent their, their children successfully. Thank you. Ms. Moore, and that should not be an issue. It's not. That, that, that you all are in the same gymnasium when a volleyball tournament is happening. And, and she also uh, complained when he gave me money to get the hair, the girl no, hair done. No, that was for your nails. It was not. He asked for a receipt for the hair, for the girl. <laughs> your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Bell. He probably did need a receipt to show you. So now we're here. Do you have... Well, let me... Are you still wearing the ring? Let me see. The, that's a nice ring. Juan, would you hand me the ring? So this is the engagement ring you're suing over. Yes. Beautiful ring. Thank you. I must say. Thank you, Your Honor. Five years you made up for some lost time. I sure did. I, I did my best. You're suing, though, for this ring. I'm going to leave this here. The value of this ring. Yes. And also for a thousand dollars for a venue. The two of you started planning the wedding. Yes. So you've called things off. Yes. Are you aware of this? You understand this? I didn't want it to be called off. Yes, I am aware. The one thousand dollar deposit that you put on the venue. You put that money down on the venue. Yes, and paid fifty dollars a month since two thousand. And it's non-refundable. Yeah. Yes. So here's what we're going to do. On the issue of the $1,000, it's a non-refundable deposit. You decided to end the relationship. That deposit, she's not required to pay. To be honest, the bigger I'm willing issue... to lose that. I want the ring back or the, or the value for the ring. Here's the issue with the ring. The ring was a gift to her. Under the law, when you give someone a gift, you can't get it back. There is, however, one exception. Hmm. to the rules on gifts, and that is an engagement ring. Because it, it is the one gift that you give someone is only given in contemplation of marriage. If the marriage does not happen, you are required by law to return the engagement ring. So, Juan, I'm going to give you this ring, and I ask you to return this ring to its rightful owner, which is Mr. Reed. Me. Mr. Reed, stop gloating. Sorry, Your Honor. Because at the end of the day, sir, this has been seven years That's that the two of you Thank have you, spent Thank in you, a relationship. That is a long time, sir. I agree, Your Honor. So this is not the time to gloat. I understand that you're upset. Ms. Moore, I believe Mr. Reed when he talks about the problems and the issues that's led to this breakup. Because you've been engaged for two years. That is a long time. This is not a quick decision. This is not a rash decision. Ms. Moore? <laughs> 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 Mr. 
Miss Moore, <laughs> under the law, you have to return the ring. That he can keep the ring. That's his. I don't care. So, Miss Moore, I understand it's difficult. I understand it's hard. <laughs> We're gonna adjourn court. And, and, and Juan, <laughs> would, would you assist Miss Moore out of the courtroom? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. I wish you both well. Thank you, Your Honor. Juan. We're gonna walk this way. All right. Oh, absolutely. I feel great about, about the judge's verdict. I got the ring back. I'm elated. I'm so emotional because I really love Bob. And we had our problems, but I didn't think it was this bad. I didn't think we were going to break up. She does that. She knows, she knows where we're at. She's trying to get sympathy. I was hoping that we would come to some sort of understanding and work things out, but I guess we just are not going to make it. Cry me a river at this point. I mean, it's fake tears. I, I'm just gonna move on. You know, it's too, it's too much hurt involved. I can't do this again. After this, I'm pretty much open now. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm out here. I'm, I'm single, ready to mingle.